welcome to part 11 of the order block strategy. So, so far you've learned what an order block is, how to take the trade, how to enter, the two different types of entry criteria, the two patterns for a buy and two patterns for a sell. Okay, so at this point you should know how to enter a trade. But the main thing is, it's all good and well knowing how to enter a trade, but how do you actually manage the trade? Okay, so we're going to talk about confirmation entries, actually risk entries to start off with. So say, for example, you're in the trade from here, right? Now I'm going to do a rough one. I'm not going to do an actual entry for this one. So say, for example, you're in the trade from this from this low, right? Because I know it reacted off a 15 minute OB somewhere there and the stop loss was somewhere at this point. Now, if um, you're pl placing it as a risk entry, as a set and forget, essentially, you're going to place the order and wait, okay, and place your target at, at the most recent structural high. Because if we're talking about ranges, okay, in this situation, so let's go, sorry, let's go from here. You're going to talk about ranges, right? This was the low that was marked, and that was the high of that range. Okay, and this is from a daily, uh, this is from the daily range, right? And we obviously refined it down to the four hour, because if we go again to show you, um, what we can see is the ranges from here to here. Okay, so that's what I'm showing you here. So if you're using a set of forget method, essentially you'll place the order and let price either hit TP or stop loss. Okay, that is down to you if you want to manage it that way. When to move your stop loss to break even. Now, you can do that on the first structure break. So we have a structure here, okay, that was formed and it was broken. Once that structure was broken, you can move your stop loss to break even and hold the rest of the position risk free. If you wanted to, you can take partials at this point. How you take partials, it is completely down to you. Okay, and it's up to you if you want to take partials or not. Okay, and for you to understand when to do that, um, essentially you'll take partials at the structural break. So say for example, if you want to hold this trade, because obviously price is obviously bullish, okay, on every single time frame, you can hold the trade, right, and then take partials at every single structural high that has been formed. Because we know that once we break this four hour structure, we know we're going to get a pullback and price is going to continue. So yes, you can take partial at this point, then take partials at that point and continue the trade, continue to hold it until you get stopped out. Okay, that's one way of taking it. Essentially, or alternatively, you can just place your, your target here at the structural high and let, let price hit TP. That's if you're using a risk entry. If you're using a confirmation entry, it's a little bit different. So say, for example, uh, let's go one more. Say, for example, you enter the trade uh, where we showed you in the last video. So say you enter the trade um, at this point here. Oh, sorry. Oh, come on. <laughs> there, we go. there we go. Okay. Say you enter the trade here, right? At this OB, you had a three pip stop somewhere here. Where's your target going to be? Your target is still going to be that structural point, that structural high, right? So, uh, if I can see it. So, your target is still going to be that four hour and daily high, okay? To reach the top of that range, okay? Simple as that in terms of setting target. When do you move your stop loss to break even? Now, this is that is the question, and that is how to manage your risk uh, most effectively. So, say for example, we enter the trade at this point. Okay. Now, when to move your stop loss to break even? When you break structure, right? If you break when you break the first structure, you can move your stop loss to break even. Okay. Why? Because your invalidation point is from here to that new range. If price breaks, then you are potentially changing in trend. Okay. So just bear that in mind. That's the reason why we can move our stop loss as soon as you break the first structure. And that that move to break structure only took what? So we triggered here. We move our stop loss to break even in four minutes. Okay. And we're already sitting risk free and you're ready probably uh, what you're sitting at. You're probably you're sitting at about what? Three R at this point. So that's when to move your stop loss to break even at this point. Now. If, for example, obviously you broke structure, right? And what do we know when you get a structure break? You get an OB, okay? So you identify the OB. Now, you compare the OB to where your entry is because the OB is where price essentially would probably need to react off before it continues. If your OB is in the entry point, say if your OB was inside here, 
Don't move your stop loss to entry until you get your next break of structure. Alternatively, what you can do is say if you're using 1% risk and say you're like somewhere up here, right? You can close that 1% risk, so close 1% and leave your stop loss where it is and let the trade continue. If you leave the stop loss where it is, if you do get stopped out, okay, you'll be out at break even. Okay, so just bear that in mind. So identify if there's an OB at your entry. If there is, don't move your stop loss to break even until you break another range. Okay, and so if I show you that, um, sorry, if I show you that, so for example, we have created, once you break structure, right? Once you break this one, you've created a range from, you create a range from here and you create a range from here. We need to wait for this range to be broken. This range gets broken at this point, so now we can safely move our stop loss to entry because we're not expecting price to come anywhere near here at this point because it's already broken and we formed a new range from there to that whatever high is being uh, to whatever high is being created here. So we're creating a, that in range from this point to this point. So we shouldn't expect price to come anywhere near here once we break that structure. So that's how you can sort of determine whether you're going to move your stop loss to entry or not. Okay, ideally moving it from the first break if it has no reason for price to come back and if you are correct, price wouldn't come back anyway. So if you if you got the correct entry, price won't even come back to take, take you out. Okay, so just bear that in mind. But essentially, that's how you're going to manage your trade. Uh, let me get rid of these. So just to recap, if you're using a risk entry and using it as set and forget, just set, you can literally just set and forget. It either hits TP or stop loss, um, or you can move your stop loss to entry once you get the first structure break, which is, uh, which is there. So say if you place a risk entry, you move your stop loss once you break your structure on whatever time frame you are using, whatever time frame you're looking at. You can even do the hourly, for example. The structure point we have here, once we break that, we can move our stop loss to break even. If you're using a risk entry, no, a confirmation entry, sorry. Remember, you can, where is it? There we go. You can use, uh, you can move your stop loss to entry as soon as you break the first structure. Alternatively, just be aware that price can come back to tap the OB that is there. Because if you break structure, remember, there's going to be an OB. Okay, there's going to be an OB sitting where probably where your entry is. So the way to wait is wait for the next range to be created, right? Once your range is broken, and then you can safely move your stop loss to break even and then hold the rest of the trade. In terms of taking partials for using this, it's up to you again how you wish to take partials, okay? For me personally, I take some partials when I'm sitting at 1 to 10, so I close a small percentage. It does vary on each trade, so I don't have a fixed percentage that I close. It depends on the potential for me. So say, for example, if I'm at a higher time frame POI like this, like this is the 4-hour and the daily POI, I, I know that I want to catch the most potential as I can from this trade because this is the highest probability trade that you can get using the higher time frame. Remember, if you have the higher time frame bias of the 4 hour and the daily, you have full reason to take the trade um, and full reason to hold it because price is obviously bullish and you confirm that on the daily and the 4 hour. So essentially, I'll take a small percentage off and then let most of the position run and hit TP, right? Alternatively, you can trail it. If you are going to trail it, doesn't matter what time frame, say if you're using a higher time frame, the hourly time frame is probably the best um, best way to trail your stop loss. So trail it below, say if you're going up, if you're going bullish, right, trail it below the lows that's being created. So we, that's the only lows that was created. So your stop loss will be trading there. Once you break structure, you put it in there and so on. So for example, do we break structure? Yeah, so once, no, not yet. So, so, so far we haven't actually moved our stop loss yet. What am I on the hourly? So there we go. So now we've broken that structure, we can move our stop loss to here. Okay, so ignore this one. We didn't move it at that point. So you're going to obviously move it below the low once your structure points are being broken. Okay, so bear that in mind. Now in terms of the trade, remember, okay, say for example you're in a bullish move. Okay, so price is moving bullish. If you get a break of structure, don't be too alarmed. Don't think about closing the trade because what, what do we know? It's not a change in trend until we get another one. Okay, until we get a successful retrace which breaks structure. This could just be a liquidity grab, right? If it breaks this low, it can just be a liquidity grab and price can continue. 
Okay, that's essentially what's actually happened here. So if you think about in this situation where you obviously move your stop loss here, for example, we break structure. Okay, then you look at this this low, sorry. Then you can obviously look at this low that has been formed, right? So obviously we create a low and then the high. We need to wait for either one of this these structures to be broken, right? This structure gets broken finally here. So now we create a new high and a new low. So although we broke structure from this minor structure, it hasn't violated the range. So we don't need to worry, okay? This price obviously pulled back and continued. So don't worry too much. So focus on the range that you're trading and then go from there. Same thing for a sell. Say if you're in a sell position where price is moving like this, but then all of a sudden you get a break of structure, right? Remember, it could just be a liquidity grab and price can continue. The only thing that you need to be aware of is if you break structure again. Yes, that's probably a change in trend. Why? Because of the impulse and a successful retrace which breaks, confirms change in trend. So remember, the two rules is literally the only thing that you need to remember throughout everything that you've learned in this course so far. So that was how to manage your trade, how to set your TPs as well. And I hope that's made everything clear of when to take partials. It is personal preference in that in that situation when to take partials. And you'll understand that more once you actually start using the strategy. I'm oh, sorry. Once you start using the strategy, you'll understand when you want to take partials and when you want to take profits. And remember, you do want to pay yourself. OK, you want to remind yourself that you are a trader. You want to remind yourself that you're making money from this. So remember to pay yourself because markets are very unpredictable. We don't know what's going to happen. Price doesn't always go as cleanly from here to here. OK, it doesn't do that. As you can see, we've got this massive pullback, right? Price didn't hit TP until this one. So we had a pullback here and then price hit TP, hit the top of that range. Okay, so just bear that in mind. These pullbacks will happen. But if you've got no reason to close the trade, don't close it, right? Just bear that in mind. For example, we broke this low. We, bro we broke structure here, right? And then we broke, we came up and then we broke structure again. At this point, you're probably thinking, okay, price is going to be um, price is going to be uh, bearish, but is it confirmed? No, because we've only just had the impulse. If you think about it in that situation, but that was trade management.